bone insect show, Bill uh, goes hang gliding, and I turn a canoe into a swing. And now, here's a man who cuts his own wood, changes his own oil, makes his own cheese, and all at the same time. My uncle, your host, Mr. Red Green. <laughs> kind of intro you, you just dream of, especially if you eat a lot of garlic. This is my way of delivering the unexpected. <laughs> delivering the unexpected, Harold? You're gonna have a hard time topping your mother's obstetrician. <laughs> it's been kind of a bad week up at Possum Lodge this week. Started out Monday morning with the breakfast challenge. Oh, now, the breakfast challenge. That's where you guys all jump up from the breakfast table, jump in your boats and roar around the lake for like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, the breakfast challenge is that the last guy to run out of gas in his boat has to do all the breakfast dishes. <laughs> got their engines wide open, they're zooming around there. Oh, it's, it's terrible. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, all that noise roaring. <laughs> That's pleasant, isn't it? Well, nobody really minds. There's nobody out there. Maybe a few fishermen. They don't mind at all. In fact, I think fish are easier to catch when they're stampeding. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, this Monday, we met up with a bunch of yuppies out on a canoe trip. I hope met up doesn't mean smashed into. You know, most yuppies are lawyers. Well, they're sure not swimmers, I can tell you that. <laughs> Took us over an hour to get the water out of the fat guy. <laughs> and if anybody should be suing anybody, we should be suing them. I mean, the Cedar Strip canoes aren't too bad because they kind of splinter up when you ram them. You should see the damage that an aluminum canoe can do to a, to a prop. <laughs> Especially when you're doing full tilt in her there. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that I'm a psychic or anything here, Uncle Red. I'm just going to say what I think, and I think that very shortly someone is going to be handing you a legal document that is going to be changing the quality of your life. <laughs> well, you're wrong, Harold. It's already happened. <laughs> This is a, a legal petition that uh, Stinky Peterson started, and uh, we're all going to sign it and get all those wusses and their canoes off the lake. I, I don't think you should make judges like that, Uncle Red. That's not a judgment, Meryl, just a statement of fact. Well, you did call them wusses. Yeah, well, that's, that's right to what they are, Harold. A wuss is anybody who diddles around in a canoe and then whines when they're T-boned by a lodge member. <laughs> That is your opinion. Fine. Well, that's what makes it a judgment, and that's my opinion. It's not a judgment, Harold. I don't judge people. And anybody who says I do is a cross-eyed, pencil-necked, rubber-headed geek. <laughs> when hunting season's over, Nobody's on a bender. We're too busy with ropes and duct tape, tying carcasses to fenders. <laughs> a bowline or a clove hitch, it's easy to get it wrong. Like one time a guy tied a moose to his front wheel. <laughs> Looked pretty funny spinning away out there, but it was safe until he tried to pass a cyclist. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to show you how to turn an old canoe into something that will not only get your neighbors talking, it may eventually lead to a for sale sign on their front lawn. <laughs> now, I'm sure a bunch of you have heard the, the joke about uh, what's the difference between a canoe and a lodge member. A canoe tips. <laughs> well, actually, uh, canoes and lodge members have a heck of a lot in common. They both are all full of dents and stuff. And they, uh, 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 but other than that, there's, uh, there's quite a difference. But you know, people would look at uh, an old canoe like this and they just say, well, that's just a leaky old boat, more holes than anything else. And uh, with the handyman, he sees this as potential. Because you could turn this into something. You could make it, uh, well, you could make it a, a really big dinner bell or, uh, or, or a firm hammock. Or you know what else you could make with one of these is, uh, is a porch swing. Yeah, yeah, a porch swing. Okay, uh, step one, 
you gotta cut one of the sides out, uh, port or starboard, whichever one has the most dents in it. Right about, uh, exactly right here. Once they get the fungus into the fiberglass there, it can be a real pig to get a blade through, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, uh, once you got the side cut out, uh, what do you do next? Oh, you're, you're done. That's it. You're done then. And uh, what you do is uh, you take your bow rope and you take your uh, collar rope from the other end, you know. Actually, maybe that's the bow. And uh, you just uh, tie these up to the beam across uh, your front porch. Remember a few weeks ago, we showed you how to make a front porch out of old ice cream tubs? <laughs> well, I'll use a different porch. <laughs> now, isn't that a beautiful piece of Americana? <laughs> and we'll just add some uh, life jacket cushion type bales here for the seats. It's also a good idea in case the uh, Marine police happen to cruise by. And to me, if you're sitting in a unit of this nature, you're going to want to have your favorite beverage within the vicinity of your right hand. So uh, I would suggest you stick the cooler Right up into the canoe, it'll keep your drinks uh, shaken, not stirred. Uh, all right, now, now the question there is, uh, did that rope break or did just the knot slip? I think it was just the knot. No, I guess it was a rope. Well, I think I got her knocked now. I went with a heavier rope. I took the drawstring out of the flap on uh, Moose Thompson's pajamas. <laughs> That's one of the great things about being up here at the lodge. If something breaks, uh, you just use something else instead. <laughs> That's the great thing about the lodge. Uh, when something breaks, you just use uh, something else instead. Well, time for me to get back to the swinging 60s. We are running out of great things about the lodge. <laughs> Is that part of the show again? We expose those three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> and here to prove that point just one more time is my Uncle Red and his good friends, Mr. Glenn Braxton and Bob Stuyvesant. There's a Christmas card. All right. <laughs> Dear sirs, I drive a van. It's a great vehicle, except for one major design flaw, rear visibility. Even with the extra large side mirrors and a rear view mirror, there's a blind spot at the back of my van that's big enough to hide a St. Bernard. A dog could fall asleep behind a van and you'd never see it until you pulled, pulled away. Anyway, my question is, how do you tell a child their pet is dead? <laughs> I think, your, I think your best route there is just a lie. <laughs> just tell them that the dog has run off and joined the circus. He'll be back in a few years. You know, I lost a pet once when I was nine. Yeah. The gardener from our family estate ran a, a lawn tractor over Fifi, my miniature French poodle. I loved her. But you know, my, my mother and my father, they never said a word. No, they just went right out and purchased another purebred poodle. Yeah, it looked the same. They just called him Fifi. Well, that's living in denial. It is? Yes, it is. That's called living in denial. Well, I didn't know that. Okay, I guess then I would recommend living in denial. Uh, Mr. Braxton! How about yourself? You have kids. Well, what normally uh, Dolores and I do is we bring the girls in, and, and we, when we've lost a pet, and we, we sit them down, and, and we tell them that uh, God's come to our house. And, uh, 
Gone to a better place for a greater purpose. Boy, that's, that's real nice. That's very nice. Yeah, but now the girls hate God, so. <laughs> Can't win. Oh. Okay, alrighty. Uh, well, there you have it. Uh, three experts and three opinions. Uh, but, you know, if you want to know my opinion, I'd say just honesty is the best policy. Oh, really, Harold? Yes. Well, <clears throat> remember that hamster you had? Yeah, did you? Yeah. Ran off to join the circus? <laughs> It is winter. I press the accelerator to the floor and hold it as I wait for my spinning tires to melt their way down to something hard. Then a loud pop. So that's where I left the garden rake. <laughs> Thought I'd take a few minutes and go and see Ranger Gord because I worry about him stuck up in that tower. You okay, Gord? Sure, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm the, I'm the luckiest guy on the planet. Oh, that's great. You're the only guy. The only guy in the universe. <laughs> All right. There's still a world out there, Randolph. Uh, People still fall in love and have babies. And, huh? Yeah, yeah. They still watch TV and play Rubik's Cube. Huh? Yeah. Boy, I miss Battlestar Galactica and Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. You know, I might get back to civilization. I've got this idea. It's a patent. Shh. I'm going to make this machine that's going to be able to tape record TV shows. Oh, yeah, video cassette recorder. Yeah, like, a, like an 8-track can, can, can tape yeah. music. Yeah. But this is going to tape TV shows. Yeah, it's a video cassette recorder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah a VCR. Yeah. Can I use that name? Sure, yeah. VCR. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's way better than what I was going to call it. What were you going to call it? Beta. <laughs> wow, well, this uh, canoe versus powerboat thing has turned into an all-out war. I don't want to disappoint you, Uncle Red, but my conscience will not allow me to sign that petition. That's none of my business, Harold. Whatever goes on in your mind is between you and your parapsychologist slash pump repairman. <laughs> And besides, this is not even a petition. This is an official notification from the government that Possum Lake is being considered as a non-powerboat lake. Whoa! <laughs> non-powerboat! Oh, oh, that's so great! <laughs> Imagine Possum Lake without any smoking, screaming, dirty engines. <laughs> Man, that would be excellent. <laughs>